thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. How are you? Good. How are you? I am exhausted. Exhausted. <laughs> I, I just got back from the Air Force Marathon, and I went to the uh, Air Force and Space Force annual convention. Uh, one was in Wright-Patterson, Ohio. One was in D.C. Uh, so I want to give a big shout out to the folks at Wright-Patterson and the team at uh, Andrews who helped out with those two events. Uh, but I, I flew in bright and early this morning because I know I had uh, two chief chats today that, that I'm super excited about. So I'm running off of fumes and pretzels right now. So y'all y'all bear with me, but we're going to get to this. It. It's going to be a, a wonderful. It. Yeah, it's going to be an awesome interview. So uh, without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. So we watched today's guest grow up on screen in films like Love and Basketball and the Dr. Doolittle franchise. She's best known for voicing Penny Proud on Disney's The Proud Family and starring alongside Flex Alexander on One on One. She's here today to give a military exclusive peek into her career and her roles on Call Me Cat and The Prouder Family Ladder and Prouder. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Kyla Pratt. Hey. <laughs> Good so morning, all. Yeah, good morning, <laughs> good morning. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Um, I I love this whole concept, this everything about it. So I'm just happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. And you were sharing, sharing before that, you know, this is your world. You fly into a city and you <laughs> they throw you right in front of a camera and you, you don't get a chance to sleep as much. And then you have to pretend to be awake. I mean, to me, yes. what you're doing is way more important. <laughs> but <laughs> now you gotta now you have to learn how to do the um be enthusiastic at the same time. I don't sleep much, uh, being an actress, being a mom, and uh it just comes with it when you love what you do, as in you right now, not getting rest and you running off of fumes and pressfuls. That's that's what you gotta do. That's it, that's it. Well, <laughs> I appreciate you for being here. And uh can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from? Wait, where are you joining us from today? Hey, viewers, I am joining you from Los Angeles, California, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Kyla, we've grown up watching you in movies and on TV. I mean, I just think it's crazy that I'm talking to you right now. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's Penny Proud. Um, and <laughs> you started... Or Maya Doolittle, Doolittle, I grew up with that as well. And you started your acting career in the 90s, appearing on popular shows like Living Single, ER, Walker, Texas, Ranger, which is, that is a great show, um, and so many more. So how did you get started in acting? Um, what's crazy is I we weren't looking to get me started. Uh, my mom is an actress and I grew up watching her perform and um, my grandmother just so happened to be on an airplane bragging about her grand grandkids and showing strangers pictures. And uh, one of them was a modeling rep and she said, hey, does your granddaughter wanna do uh, my modeling showcase? And I said, yeah, sure, I wanna be like my mom. And my one modeling showcase I did, I met agents and managers who I was with for over 20 years. So uh, that's how it just, came about, Kyla just wanted to be like mommy. <laughs> Man. I, love I, I saw a clip, I saw a clip of you on smart guy and you look like you were about five or six years old. <laughs> well, I wasn't that young. I've always, I look very young, which is what everyone always reminds me right now as well. But when I was younger, I always played um, at least two years younger than what I actually was. So I actually started in an industry when I was seven going on eight years old. So I just looked five. I was a little tiny. <laughs> <laughs> when you were five, if you was going to, you know how your, your mama tell you, uh, when you go to the fair, you, we can get you in for free. You, you, you five. Oh, like, you're oh, like, no, you mama, are, oh, I'm I, seven. <laughs> no, I used to do that all the time. I'd be like, baby, today you are two. You are two. <laughs> how old are you? All right, lay down in that stroller. <laughs> <laughs> So 
the Proud Family was one of my favorite shows as a kid as well. And it's crazy, like, even now to go on Instagram, and you see a girl like post her man and like his face is cut out of it. You're always going to say she's wizard. He's wizard Kelly, right? So it's crazy <laughs> how much cultural impact the Proud Family has had. And now flash forward years later, it's back. So what were your thoughts when the reboot idea kind of came to fruition? And how have your daughters Lyric and Laya responded to the show? Well, I was really excited about the idea and possibility of the Proud family coming back um, and knowing that it was going to be louder and prouder. It just made me realize the type of show that we were back in the day. We um, we talked about a lot of things that, you know, most shows didn't address. And I think that's why people were able to fall in love with it, because it was so real. And knowing that it was going to be louder and prouder, I said, oh, y'all not finna play with the people. Y'all finna go in. I already know. And um, <laughs> just to be able to um, reprise a role that I played 20 years ago, um, not a lot of performers can have that opportunity um, to see personally how you've grown. And um, I feel like just like fans of the show, um, those of us who were working on the show felt like we had unfinished business as well. So it's been um, a great experience. And the fact that I do have children, it's Lyric and Leah, <laughs> but um, I, the fact that I do have kids and 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 this happened um, has been an amazing experience. Um, they are so excited. I, I played um, the Proud Family movie for them years ago just to see if they would recognize my voice and they did. And now that um, my youngest daughter is literally asking me every other day, like, when is season two coming out, mom? When is season two? I'm like, baby, they just said February. Why are you yelling at me? It's coming. You know, so now I have it in my own household. <laughs> where people are where people are getting on me but it's just it's been an amazing experience there's nothing like living your dreams and doing everything that you've always wanted to do which is you know um continuing in this business because i've always loved it and always wanted to be a mother and being able to combine the two and then being able to watch mommy go to work and see mommy be tired but see mommy push through um, to me is the prime example of what I want. I want to show my children, not just tell them. And I, I did want to say with uh, the Proud family, there was a lot of life lessons in that show. Um, and there's one that still sticks with me today. And it was about um, like the credit card and just charging things. And there is one part where the credit card was like, floating and just saying charge it charge it so when i'm <laughs> about to make a big purchase that i shouldn't do it's always i still have the proud family charge it charge it but then i remember the ending and how maybe let's not charge it so i thank the proud family for making me financially responsible as an adult now and i think that's one of the things about our show, the, the creators and producers and writers, um, they always involve something that has to deal with real life. And so I think there's a lesson in every episode, but it's not brought to you as a lesson. It's brought to you as entertainment, but you're going to walk away learning something. And um, what's crazy is I just did an episode of uh, Celebrity Family Feud, and Steve Harvey was saying that um, I think the makeup artist there was too young to know anything else of his career, but she knew him as the credit card from the Proud Family because it had the mustache. <laughs> that was him? He was yeah. the voice of the credit card? No yeah. way! <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, my mind is blown. Yes, because I just still am just floating in the air. Charge it, charge it. Yeah. And it had, the, it had his mustache. Oh my God, oh, wow. that all makes sense now. I love that. <laughs> Well, well, my mom must must have saw the charger part, but she didn't see the end, so she just been charging stuff. I, I was like, I need to run that back to my mama so she can watch the whole thing. So, uh, thank you for for uh, Emily for making me guilt. You know, I'm I'm gonna go back and and specifically look at Steve Harvey's mustache on a credit card. I think that's hilarious just to even talk about it. But you 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 spoke about it's been 20 years, like. Man, life it changes so much in 20 years. Uh, and, and now that you're, you're back and you got the original cast. And so what's it like being with the original cast? You got Tommy Davidson, Joe Marie Pay Payton, Paula Jot Walker, Karen Molina White, Elisa Ray. Like it's, you got a, you got some OGs in there, you know. Well, you OG now. 
<laughs> even though you look like you 20, 23, 24. But, uh, I'll how's take that like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's that um, like? It's, a, it's amazing because we hadn't seen each other for years and we actually came back together, I want to say Christmas 2019 and had like a little gathering, um, basically talking about rebooting it and bringing it back and, and how everyone's going to love it. And, um, and then the pandemic happened and everything was shut down. So we had to um, record separately and not together. And, um, but it was, it, was, it was nice to do interviews and be on Zoom and just to see their faces and hear their voices. It just, when you're connected with people in that way where it's like, it's a little, it never stopped being a little family, no matter how much time had passed, you know, I still love those people. And, and I'm just happy that all of us are still here in order to do it because it wouldn't be the same without everybody. And Kyla, what motivates you to continue acting and how do you feel your childhood acting days contribute to your success as an adult in the film and TV industry? Um, I, I never plan on stopping acting. Um, when people say they're retiring from something that they love, it just sounds crazy to me um, just because I don't ever see it happening. Um, I grew up in this business and I was, um, one of the few that uh, was able to navigate it and actually uh, maintain my mental, because <laughs> um, it is a, it is a hard business to be in as a kid. Um, but I was constantly reminded that it was supposed to be for fun and that what we're doing, we're just enjoying it. It's not about anything else. But um, you know, I still was able to have a childhood, um, and I still plan on continuing it. Um, I think it helped me a lot. It helped me and sometimes I felt like it hindered in a way, you know, because trying to make that transition from child actress um, into adult actor um, or actress, it, 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 was, it, was, it was difficult at times because it's like, damn, everybody just sees me as this kid and I, wanna, I need to play other roles and I need to do all the other things. And I think to me, it was, it was weird, but it was, it was an exciting challenge. I'm one of those people I run towards things that um, scare me. I run towards things that make me uncomfortable. So if a project comes up and they're like, hey, can you do gymnastics and while you're singing? I'll be like, you know what? Why not? <laughs> Never done it before, but let's do it. Uh, I'm, let me stretch real quick. Um, I think it's helped me in that way in, in understanding and knowing that I might not always think that I can do what has been put in front of me, but um, I'm up for the challenge. And I think, um, being a child actor helps with that because you I didn't realize as a kid going in to audition after audition after audition that that was you know me learning how to deal with rejection uh, me learning how to deal with I'm not gonna always be the first pick and and that's okay um, so I feel like learning that not really realizing that I was learning it but learning it as a kid helped me um, as an adult when I am auditioning or when someone says no um, I know that it's okay and I know that um, you know the best things are coming for me that are meant for me so I think that's probably the best way that it helped me well well I know I know you I mean you, I know you try to you know get out of the the kid persona but man you you were in some iconic movies and and shows as a child and and, and and people just gonna remember of course loving basketball was was iconic uh especially in my household and, and we watched that uh, on, on vhs way too many times so uh you know it, it's it's hard to you know it's sometimes it's hard to shake it because we 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 know you you're in this iconic movie and we remember you know you taking off your hat and uh you throw on the basketball but you know, I don't know how good you were in basketball, actually. But but you had oh no, I was had me. I was hooping for real. You was hooping for real. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's no, but it's 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 as um as people who enjoy my work when I was a child. Um, I'm I'm not. It's not that I'm trying to get away from it. I'm very proud of every project that I've been a part of. I think it's more okay. Let me step into this next phase of my life. Because, you know, just like these characters, they're, they're characters, but Kyla is a human being. She's a woman. She wants to um, and is going to transform into many other characters. So I've been very fortunate that um, I played a lot of different roles as a kid. So it's not just one thing that people are like, oh, no, this is you. 
you know, um, uh, I think people understand like, oh no, she can do different things. And as I got older, I just wanted to make sure that people knew like, I can make you laugh, I can make you cry. As long as as an actor, I make you feel something, um, I've done my job. And uh, so I'm not really, I'm not trying to get away from it, but I'm at the point where I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> So I got enough of that. My kids got enough to watch. Uh, may come in, in a couple things here and there, but um, it's 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 all about to me uh, longevity and being able to continue doing this um, for the rest of my life. Absolutely. Yeah, and speaking of your latest show, Call Me Cat, returns on Fox on September 29th for its third season. So, when did you know that you wanted to take on the role of Randy? And what has it been like working with Mayim Bialik and Leslie Jordan? What's amazing is that um, I, I shot a pilot, um, I want to say maybe 2018, that didn't get picked up. And the creator of that pilot uh, let me know at the time. She said, hey, I'm creating two more shows and I want you to be involved. And, um, you know, sometimes you hear that and you're like, yay. And then sometimes you're like, OK, girl, I'll see you when it happens. <laughs> but uh, she actually came through and, and reached out um, while I was filming something else and basically said, hey, they want you to come in and, and test for this role. And, um, you know, I wrote it for you, but I, I need you to come in and just, you know, let them know what's up, you know, because I feel like a lot of people know know me, but then some people might not. So I take that as an opportunity, like, let me show you what I do. And um, and I came in and I auditioned and uh, met Mayim and it was just a, a click right away we didn't know who else was going to be a part of the cast so i was um hired i want to say second out of uh the entire cast so i was waiting around for everyone else to you know get put together which i'm glad we waited i feel like our cast is perfect in every single way and um I'm having a lot of fun. This is this is not a kid role. <laughs> this character is is grown grown and talking about things to the point where I'm like, can my baby watch this? I don't think I think I'm gonna watch, I think I'm gonna watch this episode first because I don't remember it. I think I remember something. But um, to be able to work with this amazing cast, Maya Bialik is. I always say it starts from our number one. It starts, the energy starts from the person who is the head of the cast and the amazing person that she is outside of work just um, just shines when we're at work. And we really have a wonderful work environment. Literally people who come and guest star never want to leave. Um, I think we all just love what we do and we, and we want it to be the best that it possibly can be. And when you're around people like that, it's hard not to like like fall in love with them. Um, and Leslie Jordan is exactly who he shows you, who he is online. The silliest, funniest, sometimes inappropriate, but you love it, man. Uh, <laughs> like and, and we, and, and what's amazing to me is that our cast is so diverse, um, whether it's, you know, what we look like, uh, what we believe in, uh, sexual orientation, um, age, and um, we all come from different parts of the industry. We have Tony Award winning Swoozie Kurtz. Um, we have Cheyenne Jackson, who is an amazing artist in so many ways. We have Julian Gant, who is an improv extraordinaire. I'm about to do an improv show with him tomorrow, actually. And we're just, the fact that all of us can be together and learn from each other and vibe off, vibe off of each other and they're actually really good people is just, it's it's an amazing environment to be in. If anything, I hope this show runs forever just so I can hang out with these people. <laughs> yeah, we, we we had the, uh, you know, the pleasure of having Mayam on the show uh, probably about six, six or seven, eight months ago. And you, you know what, she a dope, she a dope individual. She's super smart. Um, we, we talked about mental health and we were talking about some very, very deep subjects. And so it, it was just cool to kind of uh, pick her brain about uh, kind of her life experiences, uh, especially for mental health, because, you know, we we all deal with life, you know, life be life and like for real, for real. And so, life in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and so so it's always good to even talk to, you know, people like yourself or Maya about, you know what? We, we all human beings and, and you know, yes. you might see me on TV or you might see me in this uniform and think I got it all together. And, and I was talking to somebody at the conference. I was like, we all walk in messes. Like we all miss yeah. uh, in, yeah. internally, but we, we all trying to get together and put on a face that, that uh, presented to the world. So that, 
that's and that's we're... what that's one of the main things that I love about her is that she's so open and um and and even her mental health podcast Bialik Breakdown like talks about so many things and has so many people on there and I think a lot of people have a misconception of this glitz and glamour life and they forget that we are human beings and that's why I love to talk about certain things in interviews because I'm like no 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 Please don't ever think Kyla is perfect and Kyla is just walking around here float on a cloud and everything is just dandy. No, that's not what's happening. Uh, and um, to me, when you're able to have those conversations and allow people to see that you're a human being, um, it helps people feel seen. Um, no matter where we are in this life and what we're doing, we're all human beings. I am no better than anyone next to me. I just have an extraordinary job and I just have to um, practice being enthusiastic when I'm exhausted. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you do such a good, a wonderful job. God. Thank you. It's years and years of practice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kat and Randy are like the ultimate duo on the show. So uh, throughout season one to three, viewers can see Randy's kind of ups and downs as well as her support yeah. for the people that she cares about. So how much of your own life experiences uh, did you bring to that character? Um, that's one thing that I really love about being an actor. I feel like um, we always bring a little bit of ourselves to each character. And I feel like Randy, Randy and I, I would say the way that she speaks her, like her truth, that's that's definitely Kyla. Um, <laughs> um, she's a little more she's a little more blunt than I am. I like to you know make sure I'm wording things correctly in order for people to understand what I'm saying. But uh, Randy is hilarious. Randy is funny, and I love that we get to see more depth of Randy um, as the seasons go on. We get to learn more about her as a person. We get to learn more of where this you know tough facade is coming from, um, and we get to see her vulnerable moments and and see that we have well-rounded characters on this show. It's not just one thing that we just do over and over again. And I think one of my favorite things is that our ensemble cast, like we're able to, when I'm with when I'm with Mayim, it's gonna be some Lucy, Lucy and Ethel moments. We're gonna act a fool. We're gonna do some physical comedy. When I'm with Julian, who uh, plays Carter, who I'm dating on the show, damn fool. That's just what we do. That's just, I don't even know <laughs> what other words to describe the the relationship and then phil and i being together is hilarious it's leslie jordan like and we're each other's sidekick uh, uh, and and that's what i love about my character is my character is able to be with every single character in this script and have a funny storyline it could just be us two together and um randy's randy's a little cuckoo but uh we love her <laughs> she's just like everybody else i was gonna say really quickly about leslie jordan his Instagram is what got me through the pandemic. Like his videos, it, it got me through the pandemic. I was like, we are going to be okay because Leslie Jordan said so. Like we are gonna yeah, be fine. Because he said so. What's hilarious is that when they were casting for the show, um, I went up to the offices and they were like, we finally found this, our Phil character. We found him, his name is Leslie Jordan. Look at his Instagram, look at his Instagram. And this is before he was Instagram famous. And so I looked at his Instagram and he was talking about like a book stopper. And it was just the funniest thing on, I said, I have to follow this man. He's hilarious. And then literally a week later, the shutdown happened and he was everywhere. And I was like, Leslie, you saved so many people during this time, just being yourself and allowing us to see it. And cause he could have done other things with that time. He could have let it take him to a different place and he didn't. And I'm just happy that he didn't, because I feel like he, just like you, I feel like he helped a lot of us through this, through this time. <laughs> he did. He was great. He's like, oh, got a big day today. I'm leaving the house. I'm going to the doctors. <laughs> and the fact that he's yelling at his mama, he was yelling at his mama yes. downstairs. And you're like, is this man doing a bit? And he was not. He was honestly yelling for his mom. <laughs> he's so silly. And so, Kyla, service members in America's armed forces and their families are watching us live. What would you like to say to them today? <sighs> I would like to say thank you for your, the, the right word to me is, because it's, uh, sacrifice just sounds so like, oh, uh, but thank you. I'm like, literally, the reason that you're able to do the things you're doing and supporting your loved ones and, and living your life and, and to the fullest, no matter what, 
is amazing to me. And um, not a lot of us are able to do that. And I'm just happy and, and proud to be a part of a show like this where I know that people who I know that are, are sacrificing certain things are, you know, doing it selflessly and um, not thinking about just themselves. And to me, thinking about the fellow man and, and people around you is the way that we make this world a better place. So thank you so much. No, and we also have some of your fans watching live right now who are tuning in and they are saying some amazing things about you, Kyla. Um, so Julie says, yay, I love Kyla. A.E. Garcia says, I love the Proud Family. Lori Wood says she watched Proud Family coming up and her kids have watched the new episodes and love it just as much as she did. And they even go back and compare to the original episodes. <laughs> um, Raven Arthur says, congratulations on all of your success. Um, Hard's Way says, greetings from Columbia. Iris says, I love your character and call me Kat and so happy it's coming back for another season. <laughs> Paul says he remembers you from the Proud family. Um, Aaron Cruz says she grew up watching you. Um, and she also says that humans do have human moments. And people are also um, co-signing on Leslie being super hilarious as well. And lastly, <laughs> Ika says, great to see you here and being so supportive of the military community. Absolutely. There was no question about it. It's, it's We've been trying to make this happen for so long. And I'm so glad we were able to. And and getting love from people watching and people who enjoy what I do is like, it's just, it's a cherry on top of it. And I appreciate all of the love. <laughs> well, listen, I'm gonna throw in some love too. Cause I don't, don't, you don't think it's over with Kyla. Uh, I, got, I got, I got Val Beasley. She said, yes, no one is forgetting love and basketball three hearts. I got uh, Mashonda Irby says Kyla Pratt is amazing. Uh, I got Zachary Gilbert said Kyla Pratt is the goat. So you you on you on ghost status right now. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. So, no, that's so Kyla, you also oh. mentioned your two beautiful daughters, Lyric and Aaliyah. So how do you balance motherhood, having a successful career, doing 18 shows, uh and and, and doing all this stuff? We, we got we got career people, we got folks that have careers that are trying to juggle that, balance that life and family. Uh, how do you do it specifically? Because it's it's tough. It's very tough. Um, I just, I, I feel like we are more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. Um, I feel like sometimes we let certain rules get in the way of what we're supposed to be doing. Um, I know that I've always been very secure within myself. And then when I had kids, I kind of just, my mind kind of went to a different place of like, Am I going to be able to do this? Um, I'm in charge of another human being and how they feel about themselves and and how they move throughout this world and 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 I but I still want to I want to, I don't want to lose myself in the process because I know that I'm going to put that off on them maybe later. I'm I'm a I'm I'm trying to make sure that I'm healing my kids before I need to heal them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, and at the same time, make sure that I still get to do everything that I've always wanted to do. And now that my kids are a certain age, it's a little bit easier um, because I know that I'm able to talk to them. They're able to understand. They're able to see, um, you know, life doesn't stop because you became a parent. Um, you can do it all. You're going to be tired. <laughs> yep. You're going to be tired, but life is about balance. Life is about, I've, I always tell people, I've always wanted to be an actress. And I, I've, since I was a little girl, always wanted to be a mom. And the fact that I am one doesn't mean that I have to, you know, stop certain things. And uh, I have to make time for myself. Mommy has to feel good in order for everybody to feel good. So I'm like, hey, what do I have to do to feel good? You need to work out. You need to eat properly. You need. There are certain things that I try to maintain in my lifestyle that I know make me feel good. So I'm able to get up and even on days off, like my kids are, I got a middle schooler now and I'm like, wait, uh -oh. what time do you have to be in school? <laughs> Is this too much? But I'm, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to balance it all. And I'm trying to, uh, it's not, um, 
what do I say? It's not, I'm not hop, just anybody watching. I'm not hopping out of bed like, oh, coffee time, time to go live the life. It's amazing. This is, I get up and I'm like, all right, what time I got to be to work? Oh, yeah. I got 15 minutes. Let me go make sure the kids' lunches are good. Let me make sure <laughs> they do this today. Picking up from school, make sure we talk about, hey, what was the best thing that happened at school today? Is there anything that you didn't like that happened at school today? Let's talk about it. Um, I just, I'm very hands-on when it comes to being a mom and um, I love what I do. So I have to figure out the balance. And sometimes, I mean, I think the hardest thing for me is because I've been working for so long, my entire life, I've been low-key programmed to like, oh, work. Work is here, time to go. Oh, got a job, drop this, work, 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 work. And then now that my ki my kids are here, it's like, no, 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 you have to find time to balance. It's not always about work. Sometimes it's a wonderful project, but is that gonna interfere with my trip that I need to take with my kids before they go back to school? You know what I mean? Like, it's all about yeah. like figuring out, um, figuring out balance. That's, I feel like that's really what a lot of life is. It's balance, 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 and not losing yourself while you're trying to make sure that your kids have everything. Um, mommy's still, hey, I want to do a, an amusement park. I'm going to take them to an amusement park to celebrate my birthday. And then I'm going to have an amusement park day with only adults. We're going to balance it out. We're going to do it all, you know? But, so therefore, I'm sleepy. I'm tired. But I wouldn't change anything because I love everything that I'm doing. Wait, well, you say you got a middle school. Long answer, but balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, and you, you talk about how, how time flies and, you know, you look up and, and your oldest is in middle school. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to warn you right now because uh, my I, I have a one-year-old grandson. And so you think you love your kids until they have kids. And now I'm just I'm like, I, I look at my son, I'm like, man, I, I I don't love you as much as I thought I did because this is what <laughs> that you brought into this world, man. It's, oh, it's it's just a whole different ball game. And so, oh, I'm chopped uh, liver to my mom since my nieces came around. I'm like, I was happy you were here, but now, like, she doesn't bring me souvenirs back from her trips. It's all about oh, yeah. Molly and Maggie. It's over. My mom just my mom just quoted uh, uh, Goldie Hawn the other night. No, no, uh, Overboard. And she said, honey, if you have a baby, you won't be the baby anymore. <laughs> That's just, it is, is what it is. That's how it goes. But yeah. first of all, I want to say, okay, granddaddy, skin. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> Would that's, I never know? Listen, that's cocoa cocoa butter. You keep the cocoa I'm butter you, going. I'm shake butter up right now. I'm trying to make sure I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now, so as a reminder for our viewers, Call Me Cat returns for season three on September 29th. We're so excited to tune in. Kyla, what can viewers expect from the upcoming season and what other projects are on the horizon for you? I'm really excited for the upcoming season of Call Me Cat. Um, this show, we basically started filming it during a pandemic, during a global pandemic. Um, so it was very difficult to try to um, develop a character during that time and, and, and let alone develop an entire show. And I feel like season three, we're finally finding ourselves. We're finally understanding who all these characters are and their connections and their stories. And I just think it's, funnier and funnier and funnier. And there's so much more that we're gonna learn about these characters this year. Kat is still running around like a crazy person as she should be. Um, Randy is still pretending to not be a crazy person. She's trying to, my character is trying to figure out how did she get involved with all these people? I'm like, these people are nuts. Why am I here? And honey, you crazy too. It's just how we, are, it, it is what it is. And I just feel like season three is like, we're, we're finally finding ourselves. And I think the viewers are gonna see it and love it and still get that same feeling that they've had the past two seasons of feeling the energy of the cast through, this, through the camera and seeing how much we love each other and we love what we're doing. And I can't wait for everybody to watch. So September 29th, um, we also have uh, The Proud Family Louder and Prouder season two is going to premiere February 2023. And um, also, I'm just me. I'm just trying to challenge myself. I'm venturing more into the behind the scenes side of things and shadowing directors and um, learning more about this industry, learning more about putting projects together. And um, I'm excited for what the future holds. And 
Tyler, we're super excited to see what's next for you and your characters. Where can viewers go to follow you and keep up with all things Kyla Pratt? All things KP. Um, yeah. Well, on Instagram, I am at Kyla Pratt, K-Y-L-A, P-R-A-T-T. -T. On Twitter, I am at Kyla Pratt as well. My name, K-Y-L-A. There's no extra A in there, guys. So, uh, yeah, follow me. And um, I post randomly. Um, I just started to do reels. <laughs> I'm getting really good at it. Okay. <laughs> but uh, my my daughters are teaching me a couple of things. Um, but, no, I'm, I'm, I'm having so much fun. Uh, social media is getting more and more fun. And uh, yeah, follow me and see me be random. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, also, so if you follow our, me, you can hear about more of the projects. So y'all make sure y'all follow Kyla Pratt on all <laughs> platforms. Maybe she got a TikTok somewhere. Maybe that'll come at some point in her lifetime. Or <laughs> I have one, or... but it is one video. We gonna get it. It's it's my child is trying to teach me. I'm one of those people. I also don't want to hire anyone to do it. Like I want to know how to. I want to learn. I want to okay. do it. So it might take a little longer, but I do have it, a TikTok out there. I think it's I am Kyla Pratt, but it's only one video on there. <laughs> We're gonna get that popping later, okay? Because I'm learning all the, all the moves and the, all uh, that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's coming. Yeah, no, your, your daughter got you right. I, if that's if that's what you just gave us, she got you right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she got me in rehearsals every Tuesday and Thursday, trying to learn this TikTok <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah. so, so for our chief chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Please join us later today at 1 p.m. Central when we chat with the OG, longtime actor Ernie Hudson. And also be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, September 27th. We will welcome actor and stuntman J.J. Perry to the chat. So, Kyla, we, man, we, you got so much energy. I could just imagine being on set, cause, but I can't act or whatever, but but I could just imagine being on set and y'all just cutting up and having a good time and, and, and just, you know, making the whole set just uh, full of energy. So you gave us that in the past 40 minutes on the show. I so definitely appreciate that. No, that's what I love to do. To me, everything is all about energy. And if you're surrounded by some negative energy, you got to learn how to block that thing out. And um, I love, I, I just love um, waking people up. And this is all day, every day. This is why I'm tired. But I love to give people good energy. And um, I love sitting down with a group of people with wonderful questions and for a great cause. I'm glad I was able to come speak with you guys today and show my love and support. And thank you for having me. Yes, and the military community really appreciates you and what you do. Cause like I said, you you know, we, we go off and we do some 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 wild stuff sometimes, but uh, you know, the 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 gift that God gave you and you're presenting that through your art form uh for us to consume, uh kind of takes our mind away from all the craziness that we deal with on a regular basis. So uh thank you for sharing your art form with the world. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And so if you don't mind hanging on uh, till right after the live, we'll say our formal goodbyes. Uh, but okay. man, just having you with us means so much to our nation's heroes. We wish you all the best. We we, we, we pro Kyla Pratt over here. We're going to support you till the wheels fall off. And, and when you get to be direct director, if you need a, a stand in old chief that, that can't do like PT no more <laughs> for one of your movies coming up, just think about me in about 20 years from now. And you said you can't act. You never know. Don't play yourself. You might you might surprise yourself. I can you act the fool. Sure that, I can act the fool. So that's is that is that a? I mean, that's how I started. <laughs> acting the fool, and then it just developed. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but now we wish you all the best, and just uh, hang on to after the live. But uh, we we're gonna end the show, and thank you so much, and Chief Chat out. Thank you.